All right, good morning to you. It is 10 o'clock here Central Time, 11 a.m. over there. And uh, for the um, Eastern Time Zone, as we continue to track our developing tropical system, we do officially have a track now on this thing as the Hurricane Center issues advisories on it. Not officially a depression, not officially a tropical storm or a hurricane yet, as it hasn't quite gotten that organization to it yet. But we do have a track on it uh, so we can get it issued. So that's what it looks like right now. Not really any better than it has. Now, hurricanes hunters are heading out there to check a check of it, and they'll let us know what they find. I wanted to show you the latest cone. This is the 10 a.m. advisory central time. Next cone will be at 4 o'clock here central time. You can see it moving very slowly the next few days uh, in the Northwest Caribbean. Still some uncertainty on where exactly that center will come into play. And then there it is threading the needle through the Yucatan Channel, intensifying, and then they have it officially as a category one hurricane by the time we get into late Tuesday night and early Wednesday morning. That's as it's entering the Gulf of Mexico there. This is when things could get really interesting with this future hurricane. Rapid intensification seems fairly likely during the process throughout Wednesday. You can see it goes from a cat one there to a category two to even stronger as it nears the Florida coast. Now here's the official cone extending from Panama City or uh, the Panhandle of Florida there all the way down to Tampa. So remember one third of the time a tropical system will go outside of the cone. The cone tells you where the center of the storm could go. So if I'm anywhere in the Florida Panhandle, if I'm anywhere in the Big Bend, if I'm anywhere down to Tampa, I'm getting prepared for the potential landfall of a major hurricane. Now, it doesn't explic explicitly say a Category 3 at landfall, but there's no forecast point there. This is forecast to make landfall right now as a major hurricane. And the Hurricane Center even said they're being a little bit conservative with it. Models are even higher than what they're initially saying right now. So we will wait to see how the core comes together over the next day or so. But if that core is intact and it enters the Gulf of Mexico as a decent Category 1 hurricane, then this thing could easily be a Category 3, maybe even a Category 4 as it nears the Florida coast Thursday, probably Thursday evening, Thursday night, somewhere in there is like when landfall would be. Now, what's interesting about this type of path is uh, it's called the windshield wiper effect here. Even if the storm, let's say it doesn't make landfall in Tampa, let's say it goes up to the Big Bend, Tampa and those areas would still likely see very big impacts because of how close they are and they're on the east side of a storm and if storm with a fairly large wind field. So that could be a major concern. It's also a possibility that the center of the storm comes in a little bit too close for comfort for Tampa. So that's one of the big unknowns is unknown right now is exactly where that center is going to come on shore. And that's because we don't have a, a well defined circulation just yet or a well defined center. And that may not happen for another 24 hours or so. So that's the latest cone here taking it into Florida. Now, why is it making this turn? If you're watching me in Southeast Louisiana and South Mississippi, which many of you assuming you are following us here on our app and digital platforms, the reason it's going to turn is because our ridge of high pressure, it's going to break down. So what you're seeing right now is that there's a big ridge sitting over the northern Gulf of Mexico. This is why the storm is not moving very fast right now or the system's not moving very fast and also why it's moving north and northwest. It's going to look like it's coming right at Louisiana here today and tomorrow. It's going to look a little scary, but I promise we do expect this to turn. The reason for that, you see the ridge, it begins to weaken. And by the time we get to Wednesday afternoon, the ridge has weakened enough that this will start to turn to the north and this trough of pressure, low pressure takes over. So the trough of low pressure, it's the feature right here that's coming in from the north. That will weaken the ridge and that's going to allow this to turn to the north and then it may even begin to turn even northeast as it nears landfall late Thursday. And you can see that here with our spaghetti plots. You can see them, they're all taking it into Florida at this point. So if you're watching us in Louisiana, if you're watching us in Mississippi or even Alabama, we feel a lot better this morning than we did yesterday. The trends have certainly been for a Florida storm and maybe even further east than what we were predicting five or six hours ago. And once again, this all comes down to where that center comes uh, comes into play. Where does the center form? And we're still waiting for that to happen. So there could still be some changes in this forecast, but I am feeling pretty good here in Louisiana and Mississippi that this is not going to be our storm. With that being said, if you've lived down here long enough, you know you watch these things until they're completely gone and past you. Um, while we don't think this is going to be our storm, we're going to follow it just to make sure it follows along with everything that we're thinking. So that's what we're tracking with the path of this. Now the intensity is interesting because 
if and when it does get that core going, it's going to be running over extremely hot water temperatures. Some of the hottest water temperatures in the Atlantic are where it's at over the next few days. The wind shear is not going to be awful. The wind shear is Got some wind shear right now that will begin to settle in the coming days. You couple all that together, this thing will likely intensify and it could do it fairly quickly. We also think this could be a fairly large system too. So that comes into play when you're talking about storm surge and other factors. So this is Wednesday. This is interesting here. This is when models think it could really undergo that rapid intensification process. Not only will wind shear have relaxed some by Wednesday, it's also going to be running over the loop current. If you're familiar with the loop current, you know it's this hot fetch of water that comes out of the Caribbean loops up the loops back down you get the Gulf Stream going under Florida that is some of the hottest and deepest hottest water in the Atlantic Basin and this tropical system could easily tap into that and help it intensify so that's one factor the other factor is the low wind shear and why we think this could very well end up being a major hurricane category three or higher remember category three to five are all considered major hurricanes we do have some high resolution models that support all of these thinkings that this could be a major hurricane this is just one of about six, and these high resolution models are somewhat of a new feature we use to forecast hurricanes over the past couple of years here. We've really developed these, and almost all of them show a scenario where this could really blow up. So I want to walk you through this. If you got travel plans to Cancun, Cozumel, Cayman Islands, anywhere down here in the Caribbean or surrounding areas, tomorrow is going to be the biggest day as this develops into a tropical storm. You'll have squally conditions in Cozumel, Cancun, Havana there on the western side of Cuba. And then once we get into Tuesday night, this is when you start to see it really wrap up and you could very easily have a hurricane. This is when things really go quickly. This is Wednesday afternoon, a rapidly intensifying hurricane. Wednesday night into Thursday, you can see that well-defined eye and core. And this is when we could have a category three, category four, or maybe even stronger as it nears Florida. This model's coming in a bit further east, closer to Tampa. Other models are coming in closer to the Panama City area, but it just shows you there are some scenarios where this could be too close for comfort to Tampa and too close for comfort to Panama City. So unfortunately, we don't have a nailed down location where we think this is going to make landfall. And it's also a reminder that the impacts from this storm will be felt far away from the center, especially on this east side where we will likely have plenty of surge with the large wind field getting pushed into Florida. So Fort Myers, Tampa, the Big Bend could end up dealing with fairly significant surge here as we get into Thursday and Thursday night before things quickly lift out of the region on Friday. Now, if you're watching me in Louisiana, we just don't think we're going to see major impacts with the current outlook. This would not bring us any big impacts. This would bring us some nice dry air by the end of the week here. There's the big area of tropical moisture with the hurricane. And then look at all the dry air coming in behind it with a weak cool front. So that would be what we get in Louisiana. This is the forecast officially for Louisiana and South Louisiana specifically. A couple of showers coming in this next few days. It's going to be hot and humid, but things will be much drier as we head into the end of this week as we get that dry air wrapping around. So just a quick little recap if you're just joining me here. Uh, we don't have a named storm yet, but we likely will within the next 24 hours. Florida landfall looks likely by Thursday evening into Thursday night, and there is a, a concern for a strong hurricane. The storm system and the disturbance right now is slow to come together. It's batting a little wind shear. That wind shear will begin to relax into tomorrow, and we think that's when that core will start to come together in the Northwest Caribbean. The track of it you can see there in the Northwest Caribbean on Tuesday, and then by Tuesday night into Wednesday, it's in the Southern Gulf becoming a hurricane rapidly intensifying and making landfall there in Florida, somewhere either the Panhandle, the Big Bend, or even as far south as Tampa, as models have been trending further east and stronger. And this could easily be a major hurricane. Category three, category four are certainly on the table. Some high resolution models are throwing out the five. Now, of course, we can't say that with certainty until we actually get the storm center formed, but that has got all of our forecasters' attention as we continue to track this system. We'll bring you updates. The next full track update is 4 p.m. Central and 5 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for joining me.